Hi Silem stars, welcome back to my channel. My name is Silem, pleased to meet you if you're new here. And if you're a returning subscriber or a Silem star like I like to call you guys, you're welcome back to my channel. In today's video guys, I'm going to teach you guys how to make an Ankara dress with lace draping. Okay, it's going to have drapes on the bottom half of the dress as well as on the top half. This is going to be a princess dad bustier dress but guys believe me it's absolutely stunning it has lace sleeves and then it has flare ankara um at the bottom of the sleeve so it's really really detailed has a lot going on but comes together very very nicely so if you want to see how to make this dress definitely keep on watching oh hey i didn't see you there <laughs> So the first thing we're doing is we folded our lining i'm drafting this on my lining first so that you guys can see what i'm doing so i first of all marked my baseline after folding my fabric and then i came down from that baseline by nine inches and then i marked that line for my hip line now on the waistline i divided my waist measurement or my client's waist measurement by four marked that and i added two inches allowance on the hip line i'm marking the hip measurements and adding two inches allowance to that as well now i'm also going to mark from the waistline i'm going to mark the knee line which is which is 19 inches okay i'm also going to extend that line now on the knee line i took out four inches from my hip measurements or four in inches from my client's hip measurements so what i got i divided that by four marked it on my knee line and added two inches allowance so just four inches subtracted from the hip measurements now from the waistline again i marked the full length of you know this the skirt part of the dress now note that for the lining the skirt part of the dress has to be at least two inches shorter than the main fabric now i just measured the same width i have on my knee line including the allowance and that is what I marked on the hem of my lining here. So I marked that at the bottom part, the last line I drew. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect all the lines together and then cut along, you know, the line. And that's it for our front um, piece done. The front part of our skirt is done. Now we're going to use this um, front piece as a pattern to cut the back piece. So I folded my fabric again so I can cut the back piece and i'm making sure that i have at least one and a half inches along the fold that's for my zipper allowance now on the hip line i'm leaving it at one and a half inches but at the waistline i took out half inch from the fold now i replace that half inch on the fold and this is important so that it accommodates our darts Now on the knee line, I'm also taking out half inch as well, just like I did for the hip. And then I'm going to connect, you know, those points back to the hip line. This is what is called bum contouring. Now because of this, the bum is better defined in the skirt as opposed to just making it a straight, you know, um, line at the back. I'm not going to be putting any darts on my front piece and that is why I don't have any dart allowance for my front piece. So now I'm just going to go ahead and just cut my back piece. And I'm also cutting the zipper allowance side as well. And then I also put my slits from the knee line as you can see. So this is our front piece and our back piece all done i'm going to use this now to cut my fabric the reason why i didn't cut it directly on my fabric was because the fabric is very colorful and i wanted you guys to see exactly what i'm drafting that's why i marked it on my lining so just go ahead and cut it on the fabric the same thing the only difference is that the fabric is going to be two inches longer than the um lining at the bottom so once you're done with that, just place the lining on top of the fabric and then make sure that they are equal at the bottom. Sew that down and then flip it to look like this. So flip it to, um, you know, the wrong side and then go ahead and sew that down. So when you're joining the bottom part, make sure that you're joining it on the right side and then flip it to the wrong side and then sew that down. Now this is the pattern I'm using 
for my bustier as you can see here i have a detailed tutorial on how to draft a princess that bustier okay so please check it out i wouldn't want to go over that again in this video so it doesn't get too long now for my flare for my sleeve i folded my fabric lengthwise and then i folded it widthwise and then diagonally now because i folded my tape three times i'm just dividing um you know the part of the sleeve where i want um to place this flay i'm just dividing that by three so it's around the wrist area so the wrist is about eight inches so i just made it 10 inches and i divided that 10 inches by three and i marked that on my flare and then from the point i marked i just marked the length that i want my flare to be so my, i want my flare to be about seven inches so that's what i marked here now this is a very easy way to folding your tape is a very easy way to um cut a flare without having to make any calculations with radius and all of that okay so this is just a fast easy way that i like to do it so once you're done this is what you have i'm going to go ahead and cut a second flare for the second sleeve as well so these are the two flares for the two sleeves now for the draping i'm using this black lace fabric it's kind of like a sequin fabric and then i'm going to use this for the sleeve as well so i'm going to go ahead now and cut the sleeve the sleeve length i'm using is 20 inches because from that 20 inches point that is when the flare will start and then i just from the top part of this the sleeve i just came down by five inches and then on that five inch mark i'm just marking her round sleeve measurement divided by two and then i added um one inch allowance to that on the bottom part of the sleeve i'm marking six inches and then added one inch allowance as well now i'm just drawing a diagonal line from the top of the sleeve to the five inch mark which will guide me with drawing the sleeve curve okay the curve for the sleeve and then i'm finally going to just connect the rest of the points that i marked then i'm going to go ahead and cut it out these are very very basic um things like cutting a sleeve is a very very basic aspect of um you know sewing so if you don't have an idea of this please you can register for my beginners course where it explains in detail the the real real reasons why you're measuring five inches and six inches here and seven inches there for making a sleeve making a basic pencil skirt which is what i cut at the beginning of this video so you can join my online course for beginners and it will really really help your sewing a whole lot especially as a beginner in sewing now for my yoke i'm just going to go ahead and um, modify my yoke pattern to be a v-neck what i had here was a round neck but i just folded my pattern to make it a v-neck and that's the beautiful um thing about using patterns to sew it's very versatile okay so you're able to just modify your pattern um to fit what it is that you want to sew for my back pattern as well i also modified it to a v-neck because the style in question the style we're using is actually a v-neck so i'm i just went ahead to fold you know my yoke at the neckline to make it a v-neck instead of a round neck so what what i just did now was i just placed it on my fabric on fold and then i just cut it out now for my skirt this is what we have this is for the front piece i've gone ahead to um, after turning the bottom part i just went ahead to weave the sides it usually saves less time for me now for the draping i just placed my fabric about one and a half yards just placed on it on the skirt and then i'm just creating little little pleats that's what basic and um, draping practically is you're just making little pleats or gathers if that makes sense so that's what you're just doing so i'm just creating little pleats and then i'm making sure that it comes out diagonally as you can see you can see that the right side is a bit smaller than the left side the left side is wider while the right side is narrower so once i got you know the width that i wanted or the length that i wanted for the draping i just cut out the excess fabric okay and then the one by the left as you can see will just drape down so i'm just going to go ahead and sew by the side along the top and down the other side and that's it for our skirt guys now for 
my bustier this is how i was able to pad my bustier if you want to learn how to pad and iron your bustier nicely i have a video on that i'll leave the link in the pinned comment um so just go ahead and pad your bustier i've already shown you guys the pattern i used so at this point i'm just going to go ahead and sew you know the side pieces of my bustier that's my front the front part of my bustier i'm going to sew the side pieces to the um, center front piece and then for the back pieces i'm going to sew the center back and center sorry guys i'm going to sew the center back and side back pieces together as you can see so the way i pin them is how i'm going to sew them so for the lining as you can see i used only a hair stay to pad my lining but for the fabric i used a hair stay and a breast pad as i showed you guys earlier so i'm just pinning it the same way i pinned the front piece and then i'm going to sew them together now for my the back piece of my skirt i'm just placing them right sides facing with each other and then from the edge of the zipper allowance side i'm just marking half inch inward until i get to where the slit starts okay and then from where the slit starts i'm just taking it straight down to the hem okay i'm not make, taking the half an inch at the slit i'm just taking it straight down to the hem from the knee and then i'm going to go ahead and sew along that line and this is what we have as you can see now from the zipper allowance i'm going to mark four and a half inches you know to the left and four and a half inches and five inches rather downwards and this is going to create my dart I'm just going to draw a straight line so that's where i'm going to put my dart from for the other side is the same thing four and a half inches from the zipper allowance and then five inches downwards then i'm just going to draw a straight line as well so that's where i'm going to put in my darts as i mentioned earlier i'm not putting any darts on my front piece because i just don't like the look of darts especially in a fitted skirt i don't like the look of that in the front piece so now this is what our bustier looks like once we're done sewing it it looks very nice as you can see so i'm going to go ahead and open the seam allowances and then iron it flat i'm also going to notch the seam allowances so that it it lies very flat when i iron it okay so this is what the lining looks like as well we're gonna have to sew the lining so now it's time to put in the yoke so this is my yoke i'm just placing it right sides facing with the fabric as you can see and then i'm placing the lining on top so make sure that your lace is sandwiched in between your fabric and your lining and then go ahead and sew them together once you've done that open it up this is what you're going to have now turn it back to the wrong side okay and then you can go ahead and notch your the allowance that you generate when you sew all three pieces together and then now what we you do next is to make sure that your fabric is showing a bit when you're looking at the lining so fold the piece a bit and then sew it down along the sides so do that for the two pieces and then place them right sides facing in front of each other okay and then mark half inch from the edge okay so when you've sewn the two pieces make sure you turn it to the front and then iron it flat place them in front, on, on top of each other with the right sides facing each other and then join them with about half inch seam allowance and this is what it looks like once we're done again i have a video on how to attach a yoke to a princess that was tear. please do check that out if you're confused about any step in this video thank you so now once we're done with our, the back piece of our of our um top and the back piece of our skirt i'm just going to open up the allowances for both of them and then i'm going to sew from one allowance all the way to the end and from the other allowance all the way to the end now it's time for us to drape um clearly i do not have a dress form which is the best thing for draping so what i did was i tried to improvise by putting a camisole on my mannequin and then i pinned the bustier to the camisole so that you know it stays on the mannequin while i drape my lace on top so i just placed the lace on top and i pinned it at 
first and then when i got what i wanted i went ahead to use my needle and thread to sew it in place that's how i like to drape because it saves me the stress of having to just pin and then take it out and then tack it later so i just go ahead and just drape and tack it down while on the mannequin with my needle and thread so when i take out the piece it's so much easier so like i said draping is just creating pleats so that's what i just did i created pleats while making sure that you know it follows that shape that i wanted it to have i have a detailed video on draping guys please check it out so once I'm, i was done draping i took out the bustier from the mannequin and then i cut out the excess as you can see and once i was done the next thing was to go ahead and put in the yolk So I placed the yoke right sides facing just the same way I did for the back piece. I just placed the yoke right sides facing with, um, you know, the fabric. I just went ahead to pin it in place so it's easier for me to sew. And after pinning it, I'm going to go ahead and sew the yoke down on the fabric with about quarter of an inch seam allowance and i'm just placing the lining and i'm also going to go ahead and sew it as well with the yoke and the fabric and this is what we have and once i'm done i'm just going to go ahead and sew the sides down as well and when i turn it to the front this is what we have now ignore that rope dangling there that was me trying to pipe the neckline of my piece so now I have my front, the front part of my skirt and the front part of my bustier done. I'm just placing them right sides facing and joining them at the waist. And this is what we have. Can you see how nicely the draping, you know, blends with each other? And this is the back piece done as well. So the front piece is done and the back piece is done. And now we just have one piece of the front and one piece of the back. So now I'm just opening up the zipper allowance part because that's where I'm going to go ahead and put in my zip. I'm also opening up the slit part so I can go ahead and sew my slits down. Now to sew my slit down, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it's the same way I, you know, initially sewed and folded it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it that way. But then I'm going to fold it inside a bit and then sew from the hem all the way to the top, across, and all the way down. Just make sure you fold it in a bit so that the edge is concealed. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert my zipper as well. Now back to the front piece, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold my front piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark her actual measurements. Remember that I had marked the measurements initially with 2 inches allowance. So now I'm marking the actual bust measurements on the bust, the actual waist measurements on the waist, the actual hip measurements on the hip, as well as the actual knee measurements on the knee line. Remember that the knee measurements is simply um, 4 inches subtracted from the hip measurements, okay, the hip circumference. So once I have all those measurements done, I'm just going to connect them with my ruler. I remember that at the hem the same measurement or the same width you have on the knee is what you have on the hem so i'm just connecting that together and then to make this this marking appear on the other side i'm just going to fold my fabric with the wrong sides facing each other now and then go ahead and just replicate those markings on the other side it's easier this way Now after marking it, I'm going to unfold the fabric and then make those points defined by drawing a straight line to connect all of them. Now moving on to my back piece again, I've gone ahead to put in my zipper and I've also sewed down my slits so the back piece is ready. Now I'm going to place the front piece on top of the back piece. I'm going to join them along the shoulders first of all. And then I'm going to go ahead and join them along the side. So the line I marked, I'm just going to go ahead and sew 
along that line to join the front piece to the back piece along the sides now for my sleeve i'm just folding my sleeve and then i'm marking her actual measurements remember that initially i marked the measurements with allowance now i'm marking her actual measurements on the top part of the sleeve which is the round sleeve measurement as well as the bottom part of the sleeve which is the um, wrist measurement now i've just gone ahead to sew that down and then i'm turning it to the right side and this is what we have now to attach my flare i'm simply going to just place my flare the way you're seeing me place it now and then just go ahead and sew it around i did this for the second sleeve as well and then i joined it to my dress and this is the finished look guys so so beautiful i really love this draped design it's very very nice and the fabric combination is really beautiful and this is my lovely client she absolutely loved her dress thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video bye